today as you see uh, is once again a beautiful line in Savitri from Sri Aurobindo. <coughs> He makes our fall a means for greater rise. So we find it in Book 1, Canto 3. And uh, it's a beautiful line. He here means the supreme diplomat. The supreme diplomat, as you know, there can be only one supreme diplomat. He is the divine. And uh, to get the full picture, full import, uh, we'll have to go back a little, a few lines back. The restless, neither members tire of peace, a nostalgia of old little works and joys, a need to call back small family sales, to trade the accustomed and inferior way, the need to rest in a natural poise of fall, as a child who learns to walk, can walk not long, replace the titan wheel, forever to climb, on the heart's altar deem the sacred fire, an old pool of subconscious chords renews, it, it draws the unwilling spirit from the heights, or a dull gravitation drags us down to the blind inertia of our base. This too the supreme diplomat can use. He makes our fall a means for greater rise. So, what he indicates here the restless neither members tire of peace our being is full of different members different parts and they are driven by desire always always without fail and this desire, its nature is such that it always grows for more and more. First, it will find an object to get fulfilled its desire. Then when it is fulfilled or satiated, then it moves to another. And it's, it keeps on going on like that endlessly. Because it is driven by the inferior nature whose base is downwards, below, below our conscious being, that is in the subconscious and the inconscient. A nostalgia of old little works and joys, a need to call back small family selves, man always wishes to go back with what he used to do, found some kind of a satisfaction in whatever he did. Even if he has passed that stage, he still wants to go back and relive it. A need to call back small family sales, to tread the accustomed and inferior way the need to rest in a natural poise of fall. You see, it is something as if he needs a kind of whatever he does, fulfilling uh, all these desires in the process, he always keeps on moving. And after a while, he feels to stay put, take rest. He doesn't want to go up. Or, in other words, to rise in his consciousness. 
as a child who learns to walk and walk not long, replace the titan wheel forever to climb on the heart's altar deem the sacred fire. So, uh, the movement of consciousness, you see, in evolution is always upward, degree by degree. Um, it works its way up through human being. But at all the time, it is subject to pulls, pulls from the lower nature, pulls from the subconscious and inconscient, which is its original base. Because out of these inconscient and subconscient, it has come to the conscient level. So there is a kind of a pool, the gravity, that's why it's called here an old pool of subconscious cause renews. It draws the unwilling spirit from the heights or a dull gravitation drags us down to the blind driven inertia of our base. Our base is that blind driven inertia. Inertia is a bedrock of inconscient, where there is hardly little consciousness. Is of course it is not devoid of consciousness. There is the consciousness, but that consciousness is very very inferior in nature, and it makes one inert what we call Jara. It doesn't want to move. That is why we see uh, all that is uh, solid matter, what we call uh, stone and all, everything. These are very hard. It is so rigid in its structure that it doesn't want to rise in its consciousness although it has consciousness but it's in a very very minuscule part that is why an old pool of subconscious cords renews it comes back again and again to man and pulls him down Then he says, this too the supreme diplomat can use. This too, the supreme diplomat, that is the divine. We see the supreme diplomat in work in uh, Mahabharata also, in the battle of Kurukshetra, as we all know, how Sri Krishna becomes the supreme diplomat. He sees everything. He takes side of the Pandavas and a lot of times he is accused of taking uh, undue advantages, taking the side of Pandava, but still he knows what is to be done in the greater perspective, in the totality of things from the point of view of the Divine. So, the so Supreme Diplomat can use This also, he makes our fall a means for greater rise. Although because of this lower nature in us, which propels us to uh, drive towards fulfilling our desires, and as a consequence, we fall into traps, we... Uh, uh, Afterwards, we are rewarded with uh, suffering. All these things are there, but he uses these. Because in the scheme of the divine providence that governs this evolutionary world, even setbacks, even failures, stumblings, and all this 
which is a part of the whole process which involves our dri desire driven nature which is born out of again ignorance which is rooted in the subconscious and the inconscient he uses all these as a means he arranges all these in such a way that through our failure through our suffering through our problems and difficulties we are forced to look into our being the chains which has been created in the armor of our being through which all these lower natures work out their plan to arrest the ascent of the human being towards divinity even he, all these he uses the supreme diplomat or the divine uses so in this way whatever through whatever problems whatever difficulties or whatever failures we face in the life through all these he makes it a point to pull us upward only only there's a condition of course only if one is sincere to find out the chink that has been created the fault that has been created and let the divine work on it so that it doesn't happen again and it keeps on happening in our life that is what we see individually or even collectively also so finally it is the divine who wins and that is what he is indicating here through this line this to the supreme diplomat can use he makes our fall a means for greater rise father what he says for into the ignorant nature's gusty field into the half ordered chaos of mortal life the formless power the self of eternal light follow in the shadow of the spirit's descent because it is the spirit or the divine who remaining us or rather taking our bodies along with our suffering along with our fall he also has gone down descended down to the pit to uplift us the twin duality forever one chooses its home mid the tumults of the sense he comes in the next in the next few lines he comes unseen into our darker parts and curtained by the darkness does his work a subtle and all knowing guest and guide till they too feel the need and will to change what he does he comes unseen into our darker parts into our ignorance into our rigidity into our lower nature he comes into us and curtained by the darkness we do not normally see him walking he remains behind the scene and remaining behind as the small portion he does his work a subtle and all knowing guest and guide till they to feel the need and will to change they means here the darker parts or the ignorance or the limitations they till they to feel the need and will to change upward become instruments of the divine because that is what is inevitable in the course 
of the drama that is being played by the divine himself robing himself with the outer sheet is behind it so that's why all here must learn to obey a higher law our body's sails must hold the immortal flame that is why all here must obey a higher law that is of the divine even not only our mind and our emotions and all that needs to obey that higher law even the sails of the body they too must hold the immortal's flame that means he is indicating towards transformation of the physical body even which right now seems to be a distant dream but it is not a dream it is a vision sir bindu has and for that matter the mother they have already seen it happening and they are working on it and the day is not far when it is actually going to take place on earth so that's the promise we have and it is on our part to give us more and more as sincerely as possible having the full faith and trust in the divine mother because she is the one who has been deputed to undertake this whole process of earthly evolution in man whether we know it or not whether we understand it or not it doesn't matter because the task has already been taken up by her and it is more so when she has come down this time taking a physical body overtly unlike other times so it's the onus is on us only to give us more and more more sincerely calling her help into all our being in spite of all the gloomy scenario that presently are being witnessed every day it is sure that she is with us always and without fail and she herself has said i am always with you whether i am in france or in india it doesn't matter because i am you or you are me this tie is a permanent one a golden chain which cannot be delinked when she takes up the thing jayama if you have anything to ask please Thank you. We call it today.